Hello everybody, I'm going to be upgrading my motors now to my uh, new set of T-motors. If you haven't already, you can check out my unboxing and overview of them. And um, here is my Phantom Vision. Um, I got the motors because the motors have a little bit of noise. This one is has the most noise and this one is perfect this one has a little bit of noise it's pretty good this one has a little bit more noise and this one is the worst to the point where I'm... but it does fly fine I'm going to uh, turn on my controller as you see here's my modded antenna on my controller you can see the video for that if you haven't already. Dramatic boost in range by being able to stick a 90 screw on antenna. This is a 3 gigahertz, a 3 dBi antenna from a 2.4 gigahertz router, but it does work fine on 5.8. Like I said, all these things work fine on the different bands. Um, power the motor on. almost forgot um, to take the top cover off the Phantom you need to these four screws here mount the motors on and you have to take these screws out these are two millimeter um, Allen keys or hex and this little Phillips also has to be taken out with a small screwdriver so you're taking off of each arm you're going to be taking two millimeter hex off of here 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 and uh, that's it and and then this Phillips here and then the top lid will come off you want to be careful pulling it out because it's connected with a wire to the, uh, the GPS antennas in here and uh, anyway uh, when I come back the top will be off okay now I've taken these screws out of the bottom that I need to lift the cover off I have not touched the screws that actually hold the motors in because I'm going to leave the motors in place until I've undone the soldering to the wires for each motor. So um, since I have my stickers on here to lift the top off, I have to peel up the sticker. You could cut it or peel them. I choose not to cut them. I'm just going to peel them up on either side here. And, um, and over here. All right, so let's get that up. All right, something is, right, did I miss, I think I missed a screw. Hang on one second, let me cut back in. Oops, never mind, <laughs> it wasn't a screw that I missed, I just forgot to that I have to unpeel both sides of the stickers. Silly me. So I've been kind of <clears throat> holding off doing this a little bit. I've had the motor sitting around for a few days now. Just couldn't decide how I wanted to attach the motors. Because the soldering is pretty important that a good job be done on it. Especially with it. With it being an aircraft, and I just wanted to make sure that I did the right thing. All right, so here we go. There's the cover. Oops, let me take the battery out. So be careful with these wires over there. So here is your interior of the Phantom. Well, that was interesting. Here's the motor, three wires. This board is called the ESC, or the motor. It's which 
the speed controller. Um, <clears throat> if you had a problem with one of these, I think it's only $19 a piece to replace. Here is the NASA, which is the whole flight controller. Uh, other miscellaneous components. It's also good from time to time just to take a look inside your Phantom and make sure there's no loose connections and everything's strong. Because you don't want any of these solder joints failing while it's in flight. But as you see, these are the three wires to the motor. Um, I may just melt it off and use the existing solder on here. And if I need to, I'll add more. Probably the ideal way of doing this would be to remove all of the solder and then add new solder. But I'm going to go the easier route. I'm sure the solder joint will be more than adequate. Uh, so, um, so there we go. Next thing will, do, will be to get my soldering iron out, get it heated to temperature, and then undo these joints. I have a very important note here that will save many of you some time and trouble, is that some of these T-motors have the wrong label on them as far as whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, I first saw this in somebody else's video couple uh, that I think was posted a couple of months ago about the problem but apparently that problem still exists you see over here this says uh, CCW counterclockwise but it is in fact a clockwise motor and um, I use a little sharpie to also mark that this is for the black um, clockwise props self-tightening prop to easily differentiate it kind of like the way DJI did with the black hole on top of the uh, clockwise props um, and one way to verify it among just simply holding it up to your original prop and comparing the threads is just simply screw a bolt on. You know, um, so black, here's a black clockwise prop here. Oops. Screws on that way. And if this was a clockwise prop, and not and if this was a counterclockwise prop this wouldn't work but if you see it screws on so you can't get you can't screw these on the wrong hub they just won't fit at all putting on the wrong hub as an FYI but it'll save you a little bit of headache when putting these motors on so you don't end up mucking things up and having to redo your solder because you're confused of the motor technically the motor is identical with, with, though either way but uh very important to note. And um, I have a couple of soldering irons, so 40, a 40 watt weller, and this is a 20, 15, a switchable 15 to 30 watt uh, iron. I put a brand new tip on it. Uh, also have a little ball to clean the tip with, as well as some uh, tip cleaner and tinner if I need it. And if I end up going the completely solder removal route, I do have some rosin flux that I can uh, put on the pads once I remove everything uh, using a desoldering braid, which I have as well. I also have some desoldering pumps, so if I end up going that route. Oh, yeah. By the way, it's more than just the sticker being wrong on these things for the clockwise and counterclockwise. It's the, um, the nut too. The, mut the nut matches up with the sticker because the nut says CW or CCW on it. Um, so when you get your uh, Tiger motors, just make sure that the threads are correct. Otherwise your uh, props are gonna spin right off when you try to fire up the aircraft. And um, as you see, um, it shows the way the uh, motor should be rotating when you turn it on. This is uh, clockwise, and this would be counterclockwise. And uh, I'm going to be changing out one of the uh, this one here first. And first, I'm just going to double check the rotation by actually turning them on is one way 
to see that these things are rotating fine. So this in fact is spinning this way. Everything is as it should be. So let's get to some soldering. So this is a wiring diagram. Um, clockwise motors will be wired like that and counterclockwise motors is wired like that. And of course you'd get yourself into a whole world of hurt if you didn't notice that it was it's misthreaded, you know, the wrong way. So make sure that you check that before you install the motors and uh, and put them on. So uh, got my iron heated up. Got some uh, 32 uh, millimeter diameter rosin core solder. I'm gonna tin the tip of the iron before bearing down on the uh, uh, leads over here. Here's how it looks with the leads removed. And there are the spots where I loosened the solder. Now I'm going to proceed to remove the four screws underneath here, then screw down the new one, and uh, solder those down, and then do a test run, which is when I'm going to come back. This is a completed installation of one of my motors. By the way, when you uh, screw back the wires, you want to the screws, you put it in opposite ends, like a star. You don't want to do it in a round in a circle, so that way you tighten it down more evenly. This is how my soldering looks. Although I'm going to redo the middle lead, I'm going to add it. So it does the solder doesn't surround it as well, surround it as well as I would like, but um. <clears throat> Now to power it up and make sure that the motor is working and it is rotating in the correct direction. I've already tested it so I know it is working. Uh, this is a counterclockwise as you can see in the diagram. So I use a counterclockwise soldering and uh, turn it on and you see it's going in the correct direction. So, that is the result. I'm going to redo that center lead a little bit and then go on with the next. I'll be back when I'm done with all four. Okay, so here's my Phantom. I have all the engines wired up and I tested that they're working, but I will show you yourself. Um, so this is the end result from my soldering. I added a little bit of extra solder on all the leads or on at least most of them. And they all seem to be pretty firmly in place. So uh, I may have a friend of mine who's an expert at this to give it the a once over to see what they think later on. But um I'm sure it'll hold up, but for the time, I'm sure it'll be good. So, uh, let's fire this up. It's pretty good.
Oh, let's get the shell back on. Okay, now here it is all buttoned up. We power it on. Alright, anyway, my T-motor upgrade is complete, but I have a motor that I don't really trust. There's a lot more friction on this motor versus the other three. And also this one, on occasion, I hear a, a little click in it, a rattle, when I spin it. Um, but uh, here, just to show you this motor here. It has more friction in it and more bounce if I move this around slowly. And let me spin these all around. I can feel the extra friction in the body of the Phantom too, just spinning it around. So, yeah, these feel good, but this, I can feel the vibrations in the body, just spinning it like that. So, now I think I'm going to have to, uh, Turn these. Uh, anyway, you just for the heck of it, let's power it up. There we go. Anyway, so that's how you install two motors and everything, but just beware of bad ones. And uh, yep, I will be returning these, getting replacement.